These days, it's hard to spend much time on the internet without hearing about VPNs. Chances are, you probably don't need a VPN. They're often touted as being a more secure way to use the internet, but thanks to the work of countless programmers, policymakers, and security researchers, the systems we already use to access the internet have never been more secure. So if the internet is already secure, what use does a VPN have now? Actually, what exactly is a VPN? Welcome back to another round of Cybersecurity Simplified. So my name's Josh Hoffman. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Control Case. We are a company that is, at our core, an audit and compliance company. However, we also have numerous other services, professional services, cybersecurity services, but in our spare time, we like to make sure that we're also educating everybody. We have a series, Cybersecurity Simplified. Welcome to episode number five. Today's episode is about virtual private networks. A virtual private network, or VPN, is a tunnel from your computer to a server for internet traffic to route through. On paper, this is more secure than sending your internet traffic without any security measures. But in short, regular internet traffic outside of VPNs is already sent with security measures. So then what's the benefit of using a VPN? VPNs can be an incredibly important piece in the cybersecurity strength of a business and are often used in personal settings. But in order to understand what a VPN is, we need to get some perspective of how data moves online. We often don't think about how the internet works. It's the sort of thing that happens automatically in the background. Of course, even if it's in the background, it's still happening. And there are many processes, policies, and protections in place to make sure your data is sent safely. Much of this process is automatic from connecting to Wi-Fi, to data being sent miles to its destination in mere milliseconds. Background processes run around the clock to ensure the system works with as little effort from the end user as possible. This complex system has been built up and refined over many years, but in the beginning, it was relatively simple. It was made to solve a simple communication problem for computers. Let's say you want to send a message to your friend's computer. If you were in the same building, you could simply send it over a wire. This is a local network. Data can freely move around between servers, databases, and devices on the local network. But what happens if you want to send a message to someone on a computer connected to a local network in an office across the world? You'd need a way to connect to other local networks. You'd need a set of interconnected networks, the internet. Ideally, you'd want information on your local network to not be freely accessed by other devices through the internet. You probably have files and data on your computer you'd like to not let strangers have access to. This is where the concept of the local network versus the internet comes into view. At the risk of oversimplifying a little bit, the internet is made up of a ton of interconnected private bubbles or local networks, where data can be transferred much more freely within bubbles, but with protocols in place to send data between those bubbles. Essentially, a virtual private network simulates having a computer on a local network. This means that a device connected to a VPN will act as though it is located in the private bubble that the VPN tunnels to. In practice, this means a couple things. For business entities, it means they can maintain local storage of sensitive or protected data and still allow remote users to access that data without the need for them to be on site. Say, for example, with employees working from home. For personal use, this makes your internet traffic appear as if it were coming from wherever the other end of the VPN is located. This is often used to hide the traffic from potentially interested local parties and to access data that's restricted to certain geographic locations. It's important to note here that a VPN doesn't necessarily make your traffic any more secure. Currently, without a VPN, the only thing that isn't encrypted and that any potentially interested parties would be able to see is what URLs are being requested. In the past, it was true that a VPN could provide a layer of encryption not offered by common internet standards, but within the last decade that has changed. So then, what's changed? In the early days of the internet, before all of the modern security measures, many individuals who use the internet were understandably not constantly thinking about data security like we do. And at the time, that was perfectly fine because you had no particular reason to send sensitive data over the internet. You paid your bills by mail, you went to the bank to deposit, and of course, it would be absurd to expect that your doctor would just appear on your screen. You had to go in person for every checkup. You may not realize it, but nowadays, you send a lot of sensitive information over the internet. Payment card information, personally identifiable health information, and passwords all find their way commonly into our online activity. 
And each of them is the sort of information that could become a problem if they found their way into the wrong hands. As more and more of the communication in our lives began to happen through the internet, it became incredibly important to keep connections secure and safe from prying eyes, content alterations, and incoming attacks, all without asking for any additional effort from end users. One such security measure was to introduce a new system for loading web pages, HTTPS. HTTPS was built on top of the already existing HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is a standard for devices to request and display web pages from servers. The S in HTTPS then stands for secure. These requests for web pages are sent through the network according to the internet protocol or IP. IP has been the standard for routing internet communication for as long as the internet has existed. And for an old protocol, it showed a lot of forward thinking. First, IP works by breaking data to be sent into small manageable packets, which was built to be able to scale up as the internet speed and the size of our internet traffic got larger and larger. Nowadays, IP has to be able to handle millions and millions of packets per second, taking things from one computer or across continents to another. So inevitably, somewhere along that line, a packet here or there may be lost. Say, some electrical noise made one hard to read, or a server along the way just got too many packets at once. It can't spend any time guaranteeing every packet makes it perfectly intact and in order because every second it has to spend on trying to find one lost packet is an extra second that a million more packets are being sent out. Because of this potential loss, IP is referred to as a best effort protocol, as in it's going to give its best effort to deliver everything, but it can't be 100% reliable. But having knowledge of how exactly it is unreliable means it is possible to plan for that and make other systems adapt to it. One such system is called TCP, or Transmission Control Protocol. TCP handles the tracking and reconstruction of these packets, and it's able to resend any packets if it detects that it did not reach its destination in one piece. In HTTP, all of these packets are sent in plain text, unencrypted, meaning it would be super easy for anyone to read and even alter the data sent through the network. The new standard, HTTPS, on the other hand, is encrypted end-to-end, -end, meaning that without the proper key, any data being transferred is completely unreadable. In this system, data is encrypted at the source before it's wrapped up and unencrypted at the destination after it's reconstructed, meaning packets never leave the device without security. Browsers will show a little lock icon in the corner of the URL bar when you're connected to a site with HTTPS and the URL will also start with HTTPS. This connection is also verified with a certificate system to ensure that you're actually connecting to, for example, google.com, and not a website that just says it's google.com. But of course, the most secure connection in the world does nothing if the website you're connecting to isn't properly secure and handling your data with care, right? Fortunately, there are many standards for cybersecurity and in the handling of sensitive customer information over the internet, and those standards have become more and more robust over the years. You may have heard of HIPAA, H-I-P-A-A, -A, which indicates how medical data must be handled. But there are many different standards, such as PCI for payment card information, all of which you can learn more about through other videos on our channel. That is all to say, there are many protections in place to ensure that your internet traffic doesn't fall into the hands of attackers. And while a VPN may be one additional step in the process, using one for security may not be as significant an improvement in your overall online security as, for example, using a password manager or just ensuring you have the proper settings on your router. As mentioned, however, you may find a VPN useful if you need to access the internet as if you were somewhere else, such as if you need to access files remotely, if a firewall is preventing you from accessing certain content, or if you're trying to access data that is region locked. Naturally, you should do your due diligence and ensure that a VPN in this way does not violate the terms of service of the website you're trying to access. Modern VPNs also provide additional services, such as password managers, web identity monitoring, promises to not log any of your internet traffic, a wide choice of servers in many countries to pick from, and an all or nothing kill switch, meaning that if the connection to the VPN drops, that it won't reconnect outside of the VPN, all of which are helpful additional security measures in certain situations. The internet has slowly but surely become the primary medium for our private and public communications. And thanks to the hard work of thousands of individuals all over the world, 
privacy and security are built into the underlying systems and protocols that transport that communication across the internet. Meaning that nowadays, security comes to us by default. Thanks for watching today. I'm really glad that you were able to join us. And please join us with some of the other videos that we have online. We're doing our best to make sure that we share as much knowledge as we have to make sure that you're as educated as possible, hopefully making it at least a little bit interesting. And along the way, making sure that you're a little bit more protected, a little bit safer. Josh Hoffman from Control Case. We'll see you soon.